Greetings and welcome to this new episode of our Icelandic adventure here on CK3. We are still with King Ara Ottarsson and in the previous episode I have unfortunately failed to adopt feudalism. The reason for that is quite <laughs> simple. I have basically miscalculated the times needed in order to complete all the requirements because as you can see the requirement we still miss is the tribal authority. We need to have absolute tribal authority. The problem is that I did not consider that there is a long time needed to pass from one level to another. And we are currently with high tribal authority, but it will take basically other 10 years before we can move to the next step and meet the last of the requirements needed to adopt feudal ways. The problem in all of this is that King Ara is already quite old, he's 59 years old and I cannot really be sure that he will uh, manage to live until we move to feudal ways. So let's make sure first of all that all the members of my family are at my court. Now I need to make sure that everyone is married in general, all adults. And now it is time to check uh, also for the kids, make sure that all the kids have an education. I can hold court. Let's do it. Before the court is underway, my chancellor pulls me aside. My lord, there will be so many attending your court. I know you are somewhat challenged in remembering every face. I propose a solution we require at all at the court to wear dress which includes local styles recognizable to all. I think I can spend a little bit of gold. We have a lot. Let's do it. And we increase also our court grandeur. A year of the frontier. This hero who goes by the name Fasti. 25 of prowess, Sasatru Saminors, nice has been defending the small folk from the Prussian raiders and has now traveled the way to Reykjavik to seek an audience with me. I don't want to make him my vassal. Let's spend other gold. Not too happy about this, but it's fine. The next petitioner is evidently somewhat of a stranger in this court. My lord, I have to come to declare that people of Varmaland are refusing to pay the taxes. Okay. I think we can try our luck here and try to imprison Birgir. Very good. My business here is done. By the way, we should kill time and try to expand farther. We move all armies there and try to conquer this uh, small county. We should be able to do so. Ah, and first divorce, here it is. It will cost me piety, but I did it because it seems that these two are unable to have kids. Dangerous faction, we will take a look at that. Ah, they're not so dangerous for the moment. Find a spouse, so I need to find someone who is pretty for the boy, but someone who is young, like this lady, Saminors, even if she belongs to the old Asatru fate. Let's do it. Siege so won, we won the war, and force demands. Very good. We have to wait 
other seven years in order to pass to absolute tribal authority. At least we have the chance to unlock another perk from the learning lifestyle and from the medicine focus. So we're still doing fine at the age of 62. And here we have a peasant trouble, it seems. Wants lower county control, military power, three members. Okay, we have the peasant uprising, but I'm not sure where they are. Ah, over there, okay. But we should be able to handle them without any issue. And of course we win immediately and we can disband the army. Very good. And we got rid of one faction and now we have one prisoner. Can he pay? Not really. Then gain weak hook and recruit. Let's see what happens at court. A courtier's corn. Why would your honor that doxy with the position at court and not me? This is a mot, my champion. Okay, I think I can appoint him as uh, my food taster, and uh, if somebody will try to poison him, to poison me, then he will die, so it's not a big problem. And uh, getting ahead. Phil Kirhara cries one. We are the followers of Kari the Headless, a great holy man who has been decapitated as part of a prophecy. As often happens with holy figure, his head started rolling away. We have been chasing it through the land. <laughs> you have my leave to search the stronghold. Let me join. <laughs> In your search? I will not allow a cult to rummage through my court and I gain a court grandeur. Let's do it. Very good. Definitely there are no lost heads in my court. Go search somewhere else, boys. I can hold court again. 50 of prestige is the price to pay, but we're fine with that. I recognize the next set of petitioners immediately. They are High Chieftain Gunnar and the Chieftain Biejan. So, my son. Yes. A pair that are well known for their intense rivalry. Many in your realm are intensely dissatisfied with the current tax regime. They find it to be unjustifiably extortionate. I'm sure if you look at this another way, this is a diplomacy challenge, we have 72% of chances of uh, resolving it. And should this be the case, the opinion of both vassals will increase of 20. Let's try. Yes. A feast under your name. Chieftain Birgir approaches me with a straighter posture than usual and visibly eager about what he has to say. My liege, there's much to celebrate under your rule. Please allow me to pay for the expenses of your next feast. Perhaps in return you will grant me a favor in the future. No strings attached. Your liege demands it. The... Count will lose 30 of opinion, but hosting a feast in the near future will heal the reward of core grandeur value. Let's do it. Services rendered. My cham charming champion Emund bows before me. I bid you invest me with uh, my own land in your kingdom. Other lords have been given more for far less. Now. I'm sorry, my friend, I'm not going to give away a piece of land 
that I directly control. I do not appreciate your tone, champion. He will lose 20 of opinion and leave my court. Fine. We have other champions anyway. I didn't want to give away other piece of land because I already reduced the number of uh, domain that I directly control because I wanted to be within the domain limit. If this request was coming uh, at an earlier point, I would have accepted, but this is not the case. Wrong timing, my friend. I think I should, uh, instead of attacking this little boy, who is also slow, I should rather take the chance to attack High Chieftain Bijas, because he's trying to conquer this territory. So, while he's busy trying to conquer this territory, we might attack his territories. And we might do it for... This whole duchy, for example. Which is more developed. It's risky, but let's do it. After all, we have a huge army. So why not? The problem is that it costs us a lot of prestige and we need prestige, but still. Let's do it. Ah, okay. They're trying to attack the territory of uh, Kittila. It will take them 17 months. By the time we conclude the siege of uh, Runala, then we will move our 7,000 soldiers here. And in the meantime, we can keep continuing the siege here. And we start destroying their soldiers. We have a few others joining, but we will destroy them too. us again but they will be destroyed again and soon it will be time for the absolute tribal authority plus 75 percent let's prevent our opponents from uh, freeing the occupied the siege territory we move our 8,263 soldiers. Of course, we easily annihilate them and we win the war. We can enforce demands. Very good. And now the Kingdom of Iceland gets bigger and bigger. Now we are, let me take a look. We have a total of 72 the Euro counties and we need 96 in order to claim for the empire. The Turumic Reformation, King Kishai, a prominent figure among the Turumists, has gathered every shaman in the land together to discuss their beliefs and establish an official doctrine for the pagan faith. So basically we have now Turumism, which is no longer uh, an unreformed faith, it's an organized faith.
<laughs> a great holy war or two will put these heathens in their place. I agree. I can create a kingdom. Why not? It gives me also prestige. Let's do it. Let's usurp. Yes. Too many Dutch is held, true, but I will take care of that. So very good. I am again uh, below the domain limits. I also got rid of the duchy in excess. So now I have the four counties uh, in Iceland plus two additional counties here. And now, my dears, pass law, tribal authority, decision available, adopt feudal ways. <laughs> the long awaited moment is here, guys. <laughs> and I laugh because I know that this might be the end of this adventure, but uh, let's see. Let's see how things develop. A new era that always have served us well and we will always honor them. However, as the king of Iceland, I have concluded that we must adopt feudalism and its principle if we shall continue to prosper. It is the crucial next step on our road to greatness. Yes! And we finally moved from tribal to feudal, but the challenge will begin now. And as you can see, this has also heavily impacted the number of soldiers we currently have. Luckily, all the neighboring rulers are quite fragmented right now. And some might be a little bit more challenging, but I think in the end it was probably a good time to do it. And at the age of 69, Kingara is still uh, doing fine. So we might have these uh, final years to develop a lot. We might use them a lot to develop our territories because, of course, we will need to rebuild everything starting from the counties that are immediately under our control because uh, Without that, we are too exposed to the neighboring rulers. The good thing is that right now there are no strong neighboring rulers who could really challenge us. And take a look at Europe, guys. Look how fragmented Europe is. The only vast territories in Europe are the ones of the Kingdom of Iceland. But guys, we might have a crazy succession uh, next time. And we definitely need to work on the development now that we finally adopted feudalism. So there are some threats that I can already see at the horizon and that might easily bring our campaign to a rapid end. But let's see how things develop. I, I don't want to jinx it. I hope you will be there with me to witness what it will happen in the Kingdom of Iceland. And if this will be the case, guys, see you in the next video. Cheers.